which is folks will drift in a little bit. So uh, welcome to our Saturday call. Again, apologies that it's a little bit late uh, getting started. We'll, uh, we'll try to figure out maybe today how we can get a, a roster of people who are, who are helping start off the calls. But um, yeah, we're going to try something a little bit different today. I see Anton hopping on, and, uh, and this is, uh, this is thanks, thanks to a suggestion from Anton. Um, as we, we go through the different groups, what I'd love to do is simply ask, um, what are either um, some wins or something that has been exciting in your group that's been going on so that since, since the last daily call or in this last little while? Um, so we'll, we'll start from there. If there's any key announcements, uh, we, can, we can jump on those as well. But why don't we start by, by chatting a little bit about what's, what's been interesting in your, in your groups so far. So uh, Maya, do you want to kick us off? Yeah. Uh, uh, the, uh, the most exciting part uh, for us is to um, onboard new people at the moment. And um, kind of uh, uh, we want to um, still uh, proceed with analyzing uh, similarities in a good and bad papers. And that's kind of the most actionable part, but there is the least actionable part because for example, uh, we didn't manage to gather people on a call today. Okay. Uh, may Maybe it's uh, related to the end of the quarantine and I fully understand that people start to have their own lives, which is cool and nice. So we just need kind of, you know, to smoothly uh, find a way uh, uh, to cooperate uh, probably uh, without daily calls or things like that. So let's mm. think on that. Yeah, so sort of shifting more into that asynchronous people being able to kind of get to it when they can. Yeah, right. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, how about you, Anton? Has there been anything that for you has been kind of the particularly exciting or, uh, or a win that's been going on in, in your neighborhood of Corona Y? Uh, on my end, uh, I just recently checked our dataverse. So data says that Corona Y that worked. And we had more than like 50 data sets over there. So finally, like we have everything in like, you know, in one spot Maybe. and I wasn't expecting to see so much. So for the next week, the plan is to start kind of cleaning all of that up, to, like identifying what's, what's wrong with our data set, et cetera, et cetera. But so far it's a really huge win because for over like two weeks, like we have data verse for two weeks, I think already. And, if, if previous week we were like really slow to roll out, this week it was like a huge blast. So I'm super happy with that. Hopefully you can hear uh, excitement in my voice, even though <laughs> I still before my first cup of coffee today, but <laughs> so exciting, yeah, exciting week. I've seen the set on there. Quite cool. Nice. How about you, Tyler? What are the things that have been kind of exciting or interesting to you in this last little bit? Um, I had a call with um, I, Dr. Tayyip and Atta last night, and that was the men uh, going to be useful, what's not going to be useful, and the things. The... You're cutting out there a little bit. The, basically, the approaches we've been taking so far and where we need to like stick to and which bits need to be refined. And, and it was really, I really enjoyed the fact that I got something from a medical expert who is running a group of medical experts who are actually doing active research right now to try and help us refine the problems they're bumping into. And it's, yeah. the, first time, it's the first time I've actually been able to have a proper sit down chat about their problems. And that's definitely something I wanted to get more of. So I, I really, I really enjoyed that call. Um, I don't know when it'll get posted, but it'll probably get posted in next sort of when I when I get around to it. Um, yeah. But yeah, that was really good, and I'm looking forward to other people seeing it because it's um, a, a little bit on. If everyone's seen the calls Art has had with the Rockefeller Institute people, it's along them lines, but more medical. You're cutting out a bit again. 
Sorry, I'm still talking, but it's, my mic's probably not picking up quite. I think I've I've turned it up to try and I've turned my gear up to stop it picking up TV noise, but there's no no going on right now, so I probably could just drop it down and make it less less sensitive um, or more sensitive. Where so yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed that, um, and I'm, I, I was going to drop into Risk's call, but for some reason it didn't happen today, so I was going to. Yeah, because I'm trying. I'm still constantly trying to work out what everyone's doing. <laughs> it's like, um, it's it's a it's a constant fight trying to work out what people are up to and trying to un understand where where people need what and how I can yeah. help. No, that makes sense. No, it's interesting on the call side too. You know, we have for me two other things that have been exciting. We have two calls coming up next week um, on the municipal or on the on the sort of more policy side. So we have we're talking with chief information officer for a county um that around what their struggles are in dealing with with data and data analysis and then i'm all i'm also going to be i'm also going to be uh talking to a uh a former member of parliament from from canada who's part of a group that are trying to put together sort of a pandemic response plan um and they're really interested in in, in kind of what we're doing and finding out more about it and kind of sharing with us a little bit of of where the where the challenges lie and seeing where there may be some, some crossover between what we can do and what the kind of needs that they have are. So it feels like those parts of the outreach, kind of the next segment of the pipeline for us, are beginning to, to come together in both the medical and policy communities. So that's, that's exciting. And I ended up, I was dreaming, I was having dreams about our, um, like our governance process. And, and I've, I've been really loving diving into this whole piece around Valve and trying to understand what's this flat piece look like and yeah so that's that's been been quite quite in, enthralling for me as well uh how about you lukash what's what have, what have been some of the things that have been either some wins or some stuff that's been interesting for you in in your team's work lately uh, like now uh nothing special <laughs> uh no in general like the same thing that yesterday slowly uh reorganizing the workflow uh, just messaging people uh, since it's Sorry. Uh, since uh, it's uh, it's like, like I need to uh, individual contact with everyone so that I know that everyone is on the same page, and it takes time because it's like uh, like imagine half hour with everyone, uh, and you have more than than ten persons. So yeah, so maybe yeah, in a couple of days uh, I, I will be able to tell a bit more, but now it's like just organization stuff. Right. And uh, Ali or Maxim or Wendy, similarly, if any of you are interested in kind of jumping in and, and letting us know, like, what have things been looking like from the, the kind of corner of Corona Y that you're, you're engaged with, what's, what's been interesting or what you've been noticing, then feel free. Uh, yeah, uh, so Yasan brought up this um, uh, idea. Uh, I mean, it's not an idea, it's actual, like, methodology, how uh, one of the biggest... Uh, software development companies run their operations and and it was just uh, incredible like my organized the call and <laughs> so uh yeah so we are trying to see if it's like can be adapted to corona y because some things were really just just spot on what we need in terms of how people may free um, may roam freely from the team to team and and things like that because this kind of create this creative chaos okay yeah. and and act, and and it turned out that this company figured out how to actually maximize the productivity in this like totally chaotic uh, environment so so we are trying to to really explore uh, uh, how this could work for corona y but it's exciting because it gives you all the freedom you can imagine uh, and at the same time, we can make things happen in a very productive environment. So, yeah, so I hope we can come up with some document for, like, uh, for broader discussion. Yeah, no, it's, it's really exciting. I'm looking forward to, to hearing more of the, the kind of the percolations that are coming out of that and, and seeing from the experiments that get, get tried with that. So, Arthur, yeah, we're, just, uh, we're just going, oh, sorry, go ahead, Ali. Sure, sure. So... So Anton and I and Carla are working on a project where we would be exploring the massive database that is provided by South Korean government. It uh, has, um, the good thing is that it has 
previous five year history of every COVID 209 patient. So uh, we are we the, uh, we are essentially exploring uh, certain tests where the turn around time is less, so that the patient can you know ideally instantly you know, whether uh, whether uh, he, is, uh, he or she is suffering from COVID 209 or not. It will, it is interesting and uh, we are hopeful. That's amazing. That sounds, that sounds like a, a super useful resource for us to have to have access to. Can't wait to hear what comes from that. So Arthur, I'll just say what we've been doing is just going through the groups and, and finding out like what's been, um, and not just from team leads, what's been interesting for you or wins or something you've been kind of noticing from your corner of, of Corona Y in the last Nice. Year. I'm, I'm seeing more and more of these exciting groups and people kind of gravitating towards us. And this is definitely the most exciting thing that I'm seeing. And Wendy, you don't have to, but if you want to, if you want to, to, to dive in, then we'd, we'd love to hear kind of what, what you've been noticing and what, uh, what's been going on in your, your corner of Corona Line too. Um, so I've been helping out with um, some of the time series stuff um, that Isaac is uh, doing and also the uh, classification um, type of um, papers. So, um, yeah, so kind of at the moment, not, a lot of exciting results report yet, but it's kind of quite interesting because I um, kind of, so kind of the time series stuff, um, I'm helping them out a bit with using some of the data sets that we're uh, kind of Tastio has been building, like the data connectors and stuff. And then um, for the NLP is, um, it's kind of a different, it's interesting in different ways in where's your, trying to figure out what exactly are the correct labels, um, which is, yeah, it's kind of a bit like work, at work where we're kind of just trying to decide what data is actually, we're trying to figure out, kind of like what the data is actually trying to do, like, tell yeah. us in terms of what we're trying to do. So that was nice. quite interesting, yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's gonna, it's gonna be increasingly interesting as we have disjointed but coherent data sets that we have access to, figuring out like what are the actual questions we can ask as we get we get sort of a wider and wider palette of those, and which ones can we ask kind of coherently? It's going to be it's going to be really interesting. Um, are there any other specific areas of like areas of inquiry or areas of topic that we want to dive into that it feels like it would be a useful thing to have some interdisciplinary minds here at Corona Y on a call to discuss? All right. I think it, we may have a pretty a pretty uh, light Saturday call. That may that may be about all we have to cover. So, um, thanks everybody. Uh, if anyone has any kind of concluding remarks, feel free to throw them in. And otherwise, we'll see you on Slack and around. Enjoy your weekend. Thank right. you. <laughs> Bye. Bye guys. Bye guys. Bye. Cheers, guys. <laughs>